The topic of this video is solving systems of linear equations using substitution or elimination. Let's look at a problem. All right, here's our system. The top equation is 3x minus 6y equals 6. The bottom equation is 1 half x minus 2y equals 1 half. The first decision that you need to make is what method are you going to use, substitution or elimination? And the way you make that decision is by going through the three-step process described in an earlier video. Step one is to clear all equations of fractions. Well, equation one, shown here, has no fractions. But equation two, shown here, does. So let's go ahead and clear this equation of fractions. The way we do this is by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator of all denominators in the entire equation. Our denominator is two and two, therefore the least common denominator is two. So we're gonna multiply both sides by two. On the right, we simply multiply, but on the left, we have to use the distributive property. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We've got two times a one half times an x. That's simply going to leave us with x. Let's show the work on the side. Two times one half x is the same thing as a two over one times a one over two times an x. These twos are going to cancel to the number one. And so I get one times one times x, which is simply x. All right, when I distribute the two here, I have subtract four y. And two times one half, which we just showed a moment ago, gives us one. So we've now rewritten equation two so that it no longer contains any fractions. So our system now looks like this. The top equation is not changed. 3x minus 6y equals 6. The bottom equation now is x subtract 4y equals 1. Okay, that was step one in determining which method to use. Step two, once all fractions are cleared, look for any x or y terms with a coefficient of one or negative one. And if you can find any terms like that, use substitution. All right, so let's look at all of our coefficients. This x term is a coefficient of three. This y term has a coefficient of negative six. This y term has a coefficient of negative four. This x term has a coefficient of positive one. That's the one we want. So we're going to use substitution to solve this problem. And specifically, we're going to solve equation two for this x. So let's do our work here. Equation two is x minus four y equals one. Solving for this, solving this for x is very easy. We just move our subtract four y term to the other side, remembering that when a term changes sides, it changes signs. So now we have x is equal to positive four y plus one. This is still equation two. We've simply made it look different. These are the same equation. We're now ready to substitute. If you solve for a variable in equation two, then you substitute for that variable in equation one. Equation one is three x minus six y equals six. And we're going to put this here. So we get three times the sum four y plus one minus six y equals six. Distributing, we get 12 y plus three minus six y equals six. Moving the add three to the other side, we get 12y minus six y equals six subtract three. Combining like terms gives us six y equals three. And dividing both sides by six, and reducing the fraction gives us the solution y equals one half. We've now solved for the value of the remaining variable. Now we have to plug back in to any equation in our problem that still contains an x and a y and replace the y with one half so we can find the value of x. This is where you as the student need to make a very important decision. Which equation should you plug back into? We have original equation one, original equation two, equation two with all of the fractions removed, equation two with all the fractions removed, 
where we've solved for x. All four of these are equations that contain x and y. And if we were to plug a y into them, we could solve for x. So which one is best? Well, I would submit that since what we're trying to do is to plug in y to find what x equals, we really should pick an equation that starts with x equals. In my professional opinion, x equals 4y plus 1 is the best equation to plug our y equals 1 half into. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write Professor Lacoste chooses x equals 4y plus 1, and we're going to plug in y equals 1 half. So we get x equals 4 times 1 half plus 1. 4 times 1 half is 2, so we get 2 plus 1, and therefore x equals 3. Let's show our fraction math here. 4 times 1 half can be written as 4 over 1 times 1 over 2. The 4 divided by the 2 simplifies to 2, which we can write as 2 over 1. And 2 times 1 over 1 times 1 is simply the number 2. All right, so now we have a value for x and a value for y. We have found that there is one solution to this problem and it is the ordered pair 3 comma 1 half. Now all we have to do is to check our answer. Make sure that it's the correct answer. The way we do that is by plugging in x and y into both equations and showing that the left side and the right side are equal. Let's begin by plugging into equation 1. So we get 3 times x, which is 3, minus 6 times y, which is 1 half, equals 6. Remember, we're replacing x with 3 and y with 1 half. So we get 3 times 3, which is 9, half of 6, which is 3, and 9 minus 3 is 6. So the left side and the right side are equal. Now we're going to try equation 2. So we have 1 half times x minus 2 times y equals 1 half. And again, we replace x with 3 and y with 1 half. So what do we get this time? Well, half of 3 is 3 halves. Half of 2 is 1. So does 3 halves minus 1 equal 1 half? The answer is yes. We can write 1 as 1 over 1, and then get a common denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So this gives us 3 over 2 minus 2 over 2 equals 1 over 2. And that's a true statement, because when you subtract fractions with the same denominator, you keep the common denominator and subtract the numerators. 3 minus 2 is 1, so we get 1 half equals 1 half, and it checks. So our solution to our system is the ordered pair 3 comma 1 half.